Let me say this right now, I was wrong. I just got done watching Star Wars The Act Light, the first four episodes. This is my non-spoiler review, and so far, it is great. Now, again, that could completely change. We have seen many, many Disney Plus shows burn us, where the first half is incredible, and then the back half kind of sucks most of the time. But right now, I really can't see where this series goes goes wrong like the other series like there was a little hints of it but from being able to watch the first four maybe it's just my positivity maybe it's just me wanting some good star wars content i'm so happy with what the acolyte was able to provide here and i can't wait to give you guys my overall thoughts with it now just a little point of reference i wasn't too excited going into the series i thought the marketing was very lackluster but i was still going in optimistic watched it and thought it was fantastic and now we are here talking about the first four episodes which again will be non-spoiler I'm going to try my best to not touch on anything that could be spoiler territory. So I will be pretty vague when it comes down to certain aspects of the series. This is just basically more my reaction to it. I will have full spoiler reviews during each release. The second episode one and two come out, you'll get a spoiler review. Same thing with three and four and so on and so forth. But with that said, let's dive into this because the force is with us. And just to kind of put one thing out there is that I've been a big fan of Leslie Headland, who is the director and the, basically the whole showrunner of this. She did a phenomenal job with Russian Doll. And with The Acolyte, it's kind of more of that. What I loved about Russian Doll was the mystery, the intrigue of that entire concept. And The Acolyte is kind of the same thing. Like, it's one of those series that instantly doesn't make you feel stupid. It also doesn't try to, like, be like, oh, it's not that, but it is. They give you the obvious reveals, like, pretty much right off the bat. There's still one that I'm theorizing by, like, episode three. I'm like, eh, I think it's that, and I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, I think that's a clever thing. If I'm not, then cool, I guessed it, whatever. But the way that this whole series is kind of building out is that every episode gives you something that intrigues you. Then the next one kind of solves that a little bit, but then adds another layer to the mystery. And you continuously find more reasons to be intrigued with the entire story, and also, the entire story is not really that formulaic. Like, the first two episodes, I was like, okay, so this is going to be the formula. This happens. Then, of course, the next episode will occur. And this will happen again. So on and so forth until this mission is done. But what they ended up sidewinding me for was in episode three, we kind of get something really unique here. And we get a director, uh, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but he did the films after Yang and Columbus. And that is Koganada. Again, I always mispronounce his name. I apologize. But... He does episode three, and if you know his directing style, it's very slow burn, it's very different, he usually builds up characters, builds up depth, builds up something into that the situation, and that's what you get here, is the Acolyte opens up big with some phenomenal action sequences, which I've termed Fung Fu, I don't know if that's actually, or Fung Fu, Force Fu, and I don't know if that's like what a lot of the marketing has been and like what the creators have been saying, but it's, it's awesome to see like more hand-to-hand -hand combat than it is just lightsaber duels. I think that's more unique to see in something a little bit different. But within the Acolyte, you get these awesome action sequences in the first two episodes that really hook you into this, as well as interesting characters that I think are just phenomenally written. But then you get into episode three, which again, not getting into spoilers, is one of the more unique episodes of the entire show. Then we bounce back on episode four. And now with all this context, it leads to some waiting choices that what episode three did a lot of other shows would have put that later on in the season. Leave this mystery up, then deliver that. I think it was so clever for them to move it forward because then when characters start making choices in episode four, they make a lot more sense. And the way that episode four ends, I cannot wait to see the rest of the season. Again, I really hope I don't find myself disappointed because this is like one of my favorite things that Star Wars has done in this new Disney era. But specifically, it's also one of my new favorite things that I think like this Disney Plus series model has tried to do. Um, we'll talk about some of my issues. I have definitely two issues like after seeing the whole series, but that was one of the things. And to really dive into the performances, I thought Amanda Steinberg is phenomenal in here. I uh, almost, almost spoiled something with her character, but I love them in this. I think they are incredible in this. And I love what we are able to get with this character. That's all I can really say, but I think you're gonna be very intrigued with it all. As well as Daphne Keene is a nice little surprise in here. Jodie Turner-Smith, not the biggest role, but awesome. I think Carrie Ann Moss is also great. Not as big of a role as I expected, but love, love, love what we've gotten of her. 
But I really do think this comes down to my one and biggest, like, pedigree to this series, and that is Lee Jung Jae, who we thought was, if you thought he was phenomenal in Squid Game, he's even better here. I mean, this man was born to play a Jedi. Like, he is so fucking incredible in this, and I could just listen to his soothing voice forever, but also, like, just watch him on the screen. His presence, he owns every single scene in here, and it's awesome. I also will give a shout-out to the fact that this is during the High Republic era, an era of Star Wars that I'm actually not that big and familiar with, and it's the first foray in terms of anything animation, live-action. We've seen a little bit of it in gaming, if you've played the new Fallen Jedi Order game, but not a lot. This made me not feel dumb. It never made me feel left out, but it actually makes me want to go back and, like, dive more into the the High Republic. I think it's a very interesting aspect and specifically where we are with this characters now. It's one of those things that, yeah, I want to know more about it. And I think that's where I'm just really at is that I love what we've gotten so far with the Acolyte. But like I said, it's great, but it's not perfect. And there's two things still holding back this series from being the best thing ever. And I think one of those things is the fact that it still is just too short of a runtime sometimes. Now, it is better handled than I expected like they marketed that like yeah most of these episodes are about 30 minutes that was kind of a lie like the first episodes I think about 42 minutes second one's about that 30 minute run time the third one's a little bit longer and then the fourth one goes back to the shortest amount but I will honestly say like a couple grievances where I would have just liked a little bit more character action here and there it never feels like they're wasting time like every second is really spared with something important for the story or the overall characters and that is to say a lot I love The Mandalorian, but shit, The Mandalorian pisses me off sometimes with its runtime and some of the times that like it just feels like we're screwing around. Boba Fett was kind of the same thing. I can even look at some of the animation stuff and say, yeah, this felt like filler. And I'm really happy to say that the Acolyte never feels like it has filler. Everything feels so weighted and heavy in terms of its story and dialogue. So I'm happy with that. I'm just maybe being a little bit selfish that I do wish each episode was a little bit longer. And last but not least, this really goes towards a majority of Star Wars series overall. I think Ahsoka was a little bit fixated and fixed on this, but it felt more of like an extension from the animation, which makes more sense. Andor is very cinematic, so I can't go against that. And I think the first two seasons of The Mandalorian felt very cinematic. But this series kind of still goes into that same tone that it does feel like it's TV. I still wish it kind of took the same approach that like Andor did where it felt a little bit more cinematic, a little bit more bigger in terms of the cinematography and some of the choices. Some of the cinematography in here is gorgeous. Some other pieces in here just feel a little bit more fabricated and feel like I'm watching people on a set. Again, going to be different for everybody. This is just something I started noticing when I started kind of piecing back through some of the episodes after finishing them. But those are overall my non-spoiler reaction and review. I can't say more other than I think it's great so far. Could be worse could be terrible again i've had these takes where i enjoy the disney plus series right in the first half and then it just turns into shit but i am going to be reviewing this week to week so my opinion you'll see if it changes yes or not but again make sure to leave your thoughts down below overall i'm going to give the acolyte a b plus starting out right now i think this could easily become an a minus but i'm staying hesitant at that b plus until i see how the rest of the season pans out again make sure to leave your thoughts down there may the force be with us all and of course until next time stay classy